We live in a world where a man gets most of his rewards, or let me put it to you like this, he gets most of his kudos in the workplace. So if he's not receiving those kudos in the workplace, or what he's putting his hand to, he's generally an unhappy man. And mark my words, a man who's unhappy at work is a man who's unhappy in life. And societies built around the rewards he get are primarily in the workplace. You don't really get rewards for being a good father. You don't get rewards in your, in your community, so to speak, for getting up late in the morning, late at night or early in the morning to help your child who can't sleep. You don't really get rewards for helping them with their homework. Oh, people think it's admirable, but if you're doing all those things, but you're not kicking on all cylinders at work and provisions not there. People are generally looking at your cross eye or wondering what's up. So we, we really want to get our arms around this. We want to just first elevate these issues because they're not articulated. If we understand, and this is why, because in light of everything I've said, this is why the most acceptable, and I say it tongue in cheek, emotion for a man to show is anger. Can't show vulnerability. Can't show tears. Can't show disappointment can't show vision, uh, confusion because he's supposed to be the visionary. He's, he can't say that he's confused because he's supposed to be leading the home. Anger is tongue in cheek. Please don't take it out of context. Really the only acceptable emotion that men are allowed to share. And that's sad. And you see what it's doing to our families. You see what it's doing to marriages. You see what it's doing to children. You see what it's doing to their health because so much is kept inside. So let me make a couple of comments, statements on men, and I'm going to be making these continuously because I want all of us to understand these as we get into this teaching series, Becoming a Man Who Matters. If Becoming a man who matters. Because once we understand what the issues are, and once we understand what the objective of the enemy is in raising these issues, and once we understand the dynamic that we as men have bought into, and it's the uh, dangerous effect, then we can go about establishing a new paradigm or we can get in a community of all the people who celebrate our values so that we don't feel like we're the Lone Ranger. So let me make a couple of statements for you. Number one, most men only change by crises. A crisis in their health, a crisis in their marriage, a crisis in their finances, a crisis with their children, and the key, if you're going to be a man who matters, is to not allow crisis to be the change agent. We change by desperation or revelation. And it's my prayer for all of us in this room that the change agents in my life are revelation. When the spirit reveals something to me, when the word of God shows something to me, when my spiritual family shares something with me, I don't want to go through life changing by desperation. I have to ask, if I'm going to become a man who matters, I have to ask myself, is there any aspect of my life that I'm allowing to degenerate or deteriorate so far 
that I'm getting dangerously close to it being desperation. Very, very critical. Statement number two I like to make is most men, most men are suffering silently. They're screaming at a frequency only they can hear. And they're suffering silently. Why? Fear of lost respect. Why? They're not in community with other men who can validate what they're going through. Why? They're lone rangers. So it's critical, regardless of the outward facade, to have a sensitivity, to keep, listen to your spirit, man, to look for ways to encourage one another, build up one another, rejoice with one another. I got so many golf illustrations. <laughs> that same day, I was walking to play, right before I teed off, this guy, I don't even know this guy this well, but he's a young guy, and he was a maintenance man, and um, who drives around a cart like a ranger, and he sees me there periodically, and he goes, hey, bud. I said, hey, what's happening, man? I always, you know, I'm always looking for an opportunity to witness. So I said, what's happening? He goes, my man, I shot 37 on the front and 38 on the back. And I said, that is a phenomenal golf score. I went off for like two minutes. I was like, yeah, that's you're the man. I was, I was souping this guy up so much. And I, you should have seen him soaking it up. He even looked at me and goes, man, life is good. Now think about that in a big, life is good because you shot 37 on the front and 38 on the back. You know why life was good? Because it's so rare that guys have something to just relish over or an accomplishment or an objective met or somebody celebrating it with them. Just my response made life good. The next statement I want to make that we have to understand if we're going to become a man who matters is most men avoid things that they don't do well. You should see how far I run on a tennis court to avoid using my backhand. <laughs> you should see. I almost double my effort to avoid using my backhand playing tennis. Why? Because I don't have a strong backhand. So we avoid things that we don't do well. And if we're going to become a man who matters, we each have to ask ourselves, what's our backhand? Is it finances? Is it health? Is it parenting? Because what parenting is such a good example. If a, so often men, when they feel like they're losing their kids, so often, sadly, they become detached. Do you know one of the greatest plagues in the Bible for men? is what we'll call passive fathers. Not active fathers, passive fathers. Eli was a passive father. Samuel was a passive father. King David. If you exclude Solomon, David left much to be desired as it related to parenting and being a father. You read about Absalom went two years and didn't see him face to face. And I believe it was Joab. He set his, he set his, fire, his house on fire, his yard, his garden on fire because Joab was David's lieutenant. 
He, went, he set his garden on fire or his house on fire just so he could hopefully do something that would cause David to acknowledge him.